morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dr. Dodd's Island and to the start of our half-day event with Intel on the subject of multi-core and parallel software development. I now give you Parrot Stein in real life, Paul Steinberg, who is Virtual Worlds Manager, Intel Software Network. Thanks, John. Our first speaker, Tim Matson, is a principal engineer at Intel's Microprocessor Technology Lab. Among his many roles at Intel, he was Applications Manager for the ASCII Teraflops project. He helped create OpenMP, which is pretty cool in itself, and he founded the Open Cluster Group, Oscar, as well as launching Intel's programs in computing for the life sciences. Currently, Tim is conducting research on performance modeling for future multi-core microprocessors and how different programming models map onto these systems. I do want to give an explanation as to why Tim is not here in avatar form. Today, as some of you may know, we're having extreme weather in the Pacific Northwest. Tim has no internet connection. He is talking to us over a cell phone. The, the message from Intel is quite clear that when we look out forward, Moore's Law is going strong. And what you have to remember is Moore's Law is, is really about the number of devices that we can put on a commercially relevant piece of silicon. We're, we're now at 45 nanometers. Keep in mind an influenza virus is 100 nanometers across. We, we actually see a path pretty clearly out to 8 nanometers. Beyond 8 nanometers, things get really, really interesting. And I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen beyond there. And the question is, what are we going to do with all those transistors? Um, over time, what we've done, of course, is we've, we've scaled the clock so that you, you get this free performance boost just because your regular old software is running at a, on a faster, uh, free, higher frequency chip. That's not working anymore. I, I want to be real clear that, that this whole transition to many cores is not because we just think many cores is cool. It's because device physics is, is biting us in the rear end. We, as in Intel and, and AMD and, and NVIDIA and IBM and Sun Microsystems, we all are moving in the same general direction, which is we will scale the number of cores, not the frequency. Interesting when you look at the hardware is um, there will be a large number of general purpose cores but it's really clear that there will be some special purpose cores as well. We at Intel came out with dual core in 2006, quad core in 2007. Uh, it's a reasonable question for software developers to wonder, how, how far is this going to go? You need to think not dual core or quad core. You need to think dozens of cores. Um, even hundreds of cores is not too crazy, or hundreds of threads. You've got to think big. And from an algorithm point of view, this is important because the algorithms you use for two cores and four cores um, are very, very different than an algorithm you would use for 32 or 64 cores. Right now, the chip designers are saying that they'll be able to build the error correction logic in to deal with that. Frankly, and now I'm speaking personally. I just gave you the Intel line. Speaking personally, I don't believe the hardware engineers. I think we're going to have to, when you start getting into you know, 8 nanometer and 11 nanometers, and you start talking about 2015 and beyond, I think we're going to have to rethink how we do our software and write software that is fault resilient. So what are the applications going to be that, that's going to consume these many core chips? Once you've figured out what these applications are, who's going to program them? Right now, somewhere less than 1% of programmers are really competent, scalable, parallel programmers. So we really need to get programmers to embrace this technology and start learning how to write scalable algorithms. The long history we've had working with this problem for over 20 years suggests very strongly that automatic parallelism will not solve the problem. We're not going to be able to just throw a switch on the compiler and find enough parallelism to, to take care of these issues. Do we need new parallel languages? Or can the old ones do the job? Can things like OpenMP and, my gosh, MPI, message passing, you know, that's been very effective over the years. Are these going to be good enough? Um, an issue that I think does not get anywhere near enough attention is the larger programming environment. In many cases, what, what becomes the stumbling block in producing really commercially robust code is uh, what's the larger environment look like? What are the runtime libraries? How are they constructed so you can have components written in multiple languages all fit together? And um, frankly, this is why I'm really excited about the Microsoft environment and seeing them getting more and more involved and continuing to be even deeper involved in this, because they've, of course, led the charge on, uh, 
on, on component software systems and, and programming environments where you can fit together multiple languages and, and, and create these pure environments where things work together. Is multi-core programming any different from multi-processor programming with careful thread interaction design? It's, it's pretty much the same. The trade-offs you make are different because the latencies of communicating between cores on a chip will be much lower than going off chip. So some of the trade-offs you make in optimizing the algorithms will be very different. But for the most part, you're using OpenMP or pthreads or TBB um, or, or you know, the, the Windows environment threads. You're using the regular threaded environments that you're already familiar with from the multiprocessor base. Thanks, Tim. I really appreciate you calling in like this, especially given your environment right now. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the, the, the first hour of our uh, half-day program today. Uh, again, thank you for joining us today, and please stay with us for the second hour uh, of our day with Intel.